2022 GCSE results are out and so for a lot of you the transition to A-levels will officially begin and I'd like to think that the majority of people clicking on this video are definitely or at least considering taking maths as one of their three slash four chosen subjects. Well if that is you I want to say well done maths is one of the most prestigious and important A-levels for the majority of degrees out there don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But it's also got one of the hardest transitions from GCSE to A-level, so that is where I come in. Hey everyone, I'm Dennis, a third year engineering student at Imperial College London. And today I'm time traveling to the glorious pre-COVID times to talk about how I managed to achieve an A-star in mathematics A-level and what you can expect in the subject. All I ask is that if you do find this video useful and want to stick around my channel, please consider subscribing down below and leave any questions or feedback you have in the comments. I'm gonna start off by saying maths is an intense A-level. What does that mean? Simply, you need to devote time to it. Make no mistake, this is not one of those A-levels you can just rock up to your classes, do your homework, and then Bob's your uncle, you get your A or your A-star. No, it takes real effort and practice, so you have to be tactical with your A-level choices. I chose maths, physics, economics, as well as further maths for my AS level. Maths and physics are tough, intense A-levels, whereas economics, no disrespect, is a much easier A-level to do. Imperial College London's requirements for civil engineering, the course I undertook was maths, physics, and the third chosen subject, and grades A star, A star, A. So if I only needed maths and physics, why not make my life a little bit easier by choosing a third subject that's slightly less intense? Now, of course, if you have the capacity and the work ethic to do three tough A-levels, by all means, go ahead, it can definitely be done. You can do something like maths, physics, computer science, maths, physics, third maths, for example. There's examples of people in my school that have done that. I'm just giving some free advice to someone that might want a slightly easier journey through A-levels without sabotaging their chances of getting into a top university. Another important point is that maths feeds into most, if not all, of the STEM subjects. Therefore, by revising maths, you are indirectly improving in your other STEM subjects. So my overarching point is be tactical with your A-level choices. Decide all three together and see how they link rather than just slapping down three subjects that you enjoy. Okay, so now we've discussed that, let's talk about what content you should expect in maths A-level. Well, I did it at Excel, so I can only really base it off that, but I don't expect AQA or OCR to be too dissimilar. The first year for me started very nicely, basically a continuation of GCSEs. You'll go through topics such as algebraic expressions, quadratics, straight line graphs, for example. So not exactly rocket science. Towards the end of first year is when you start to get into the techie parts of maths, things you wouldn't have encountered before. These are topics such as proof, trig identities, vectors, and of course the classic differentiation and integration. It is also super important to note that as well as studying pure mathematics, you also have to complete two additional modules, statistics and mechanics. Mechanics is basically SUVA, physics. It was perfect for me because I was studying physics anyway. Year two builds a lot on year one knowledge with only three brand new topics. That is parametric equations, radians and series. We'll display a full list for the modules in pure mathematics either side of me year one and year two with subjects in red I deem to be toughest and subjects in green I deem to be easiest. And I'll also do the same for statistics and mechanics here so feel free to pause the video and take note and of course it goes without saying that this is a subjective list completely my opinion. Okay so now we've discussed what to expect in maths A level let's talk about the methods I use to obtain an A star. If we were talking about a lot of other subjects and even university this could be a whole other video in itself. But fortunately for you, maths A-level is super streamlined, meaning there is just one method to success, and that is practice. Practice upon practice, question after question until you get it. Maths is a confidence game. Knowing what to do in each question is half of it, and then knowing how to apply it is the other half. More often than not, you will know the correct formula. You've studied most, if not all of them, but it's just knowing when to apply them, especially in trig identity questions. And that all comes from experience, which of course comes from practice. Thankfully, the Edexcel maths textbooks are by far the best textbooks I've ever used. And that goes across all my subjects and years better than the GCSE and university textbooks. I will leave a link down to the Pearson Edexcel maths textbooks in my description, so check that out if you need them. The content is neatly broken down into modules and subsections with theory and worked examples and then a pamphlet of questions for you to do at the end of each lesson. The answers are all provided in the back of the book, however, step-by-step -step solutions are not. 
But thankfully, and I am so glad I found this, even though it was a few months into my year 12 studies. If you go to a site called Physics and Maths Tutor, you will find step-by-step -step solutions for all the questions in the Pearson Edexcel textbook. It's an absolute lifesaver. And honestly, check out Physics and Maths Tutor for past papers and other questions as well. It is honestly the one resource you need as well as a textbook to get an A star. I didn't use anything else. Physics and Maths Tutor and Pearson Edexcel textbook. That is it. Get in the routine of doing 10 to 15 questions a day. And then if you think it's not enough, increase it. Because let's be honest, maths is really not a note-taking subject. It's just a case of continually attempting questions, continually failing, re-attempting them and getting better each time. If you truly don't understand the topic and your teachers aren't doing much, then you can also check out YouTube resources. YouTube has improved exponentially over recent years and even TikTok as well. You should be able to find explanations for any topic on there. Then as you start to approach the business end of year 12 and year 13, really start to make use of past papers. Past papers are the best form of revision and I'll make that case to anybody. They allow you to attempt a range of questions on all the topics you can be tested on in timed situations. It teaches you to adapt to different questions while working under pressure and past papers will easily allow you to identify which topics and questions you are struggling on. Plus, because maths is an objective subject where the answers are quite literally right or wrong, you can mark the past papers yourself and get feedback instantly. So overall, although it may be daunting to some, the step up from maths GCSE to maths A-level is more than manageable. As long as you stay confident in your ability and disciplined in practice, there's absolutely no reason you can't achieve the grade you desire. Thank you for staying until the end of the video. If you enjoyed and found value in the content I provided, make sure to subscribe down below and I hope to see you lot in the next video.